Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rants, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont, and I have a rant for you now. But it's a good one. It's not negative. It's positive. But it's a rant nonetheless, because holy cannoli, I have some metrics, some numbers, as you can see what this is about. The Indiana Fever have released mid-season growth numbers. Before we jump on into those numbers, thank you for your continued support of our channel as we push forward towards 3,000 subscribers. We're over 2,800, so help us get there. Love to get there by tonight, but I can be real. I get it. It probably won't happen tonight, but you know, make it happen. So let's go. Caitlin Clark has an impact. I think it's, if you haven't noticed it by now, and you keep on talking about other people involved in this impact, no, 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 no. This is the Caitlin Clark effect across the board. No one else has this effect. This is one person and one person alone. And it's not a rival in Chicago named Angel Reese. It's not. LA, the Las Vegas Aces, Asia Wilson. It's not Sabrina Ionescu. It's not Brianna Stewart. It's not all the jealous, unhappy humans who can't stand the fact that this 22-year-old Iowa grad who just finished college in April and is lighting the world on fire, they can't be happy about it. They, they, they have to hate. They have to be, be curmudgeons. And all that stuff, Caitlin Clark has made an impact, bro. Right now, the midseason growth numbers. And now we've played two games since on the Indiana home court. Ticket sales. They've sold out 100% of their season ticket inventory. Their total attendance is up 264% from last year. 264%. 264%. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. 186 fans have attended a Fever home game. 230,000 fans. Sorry, 186,000 fans have attended a Fever home game. 230,000 fans have attended a Fever road game. As you can see, her effect is across the board. She draws everywhere she goes. Merchandise sales, 1,193% increase in jersey sales from last year. The team store transactions are up 700% from 23. They broke the franchise single game merch record, sales record four times. Concessions. They have hot dog sales are up 300% this year. 2,826 gallons of beer have been sold in 24. That's a 740% increase because there are more people there. More people are getting fucked up and having a good old time watching Caitlin Clark ball. Social media metrics, over 800 million views in the last four months alone. And they've Added 1.3 million followers since April 15th. I want to stick on that number. They've added 1.3 million followers since April 15th. And I'm going to confess, I am not one of them. I do not follow the Indiana Fever on Instagram. I don't. I should. I feel kind of guilty now. I should be following them, shouldn't I? Yeah, I guess I should. Let me, let me make sure I go do that tonight. I don't know if that's Twitter or just across the board, but think about that. 1.3 million. That's crazy. That's crazy. Let's take a look. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm real curious. Let's see here. Indiana fever. Accounts. They have 585,000 followers. So that must be across metrics. I'm now adding myself there. So 
Look, that's a crazy amount. That's insane. One point three million. These people are watching games. They are watching games. That's the thing that people don't understand. And when I keep, we kept saying this over and over again. The marketing is there. She's bringing the eyes. The Fever have more social media views than any other WNBA, NBA, NFL, NHL, or Major League Baseball team over the last four plus months. Whew. It's big time. TV viewership: thirty-eight games on national TV this year. They're most in the WNBA. They set records for the most viewed WNBA games on ABC, Ion, ESPN, and NBA TV. They have a two hundred corporate partnerships. They have a 225% increase in partnerships. It's the largest number of team sponsors in the WNBA. This is only 26 games into this season. So all of these numbers that I'm reading off my other screen right here are going to go up. So the 264% will be 400% probably at the end of the year. The 1,193% 1, 1, 1, increase in merch sales is going to be higher. The hot dog sales will be probably 600% when the year is done. The gallons of beer will go up to 4,000. The social media followers will probably jump another half a million, maybe another quarter million. Um, they're going to have more social media than everybody else. I don't know if they get more, more corporate partnerships, but uh, they might. And, of course, the fans who are attending will jump as well. This is the Caitlin Clark effect. If you didn't know, now you know. It's that simple. All these things that people talk about, and when they try to make it about others and say, oh, it's not just her. Yeah, that was said by somebody. I couldn't remember. Who said that? I know. It was Angel Reese who said that. Angel Reese said that. It's not just her. No, it's just her. It, it's just her. It's always been just her. And I know you can't accept it because you don't like it, but it's just her. It is only her. None of y'all matter. The rest of y'all don't mean fuck all. Nobody cares. And that's why the numbers across the board in the league, besides Indiana, are in the toilet. It's why Angel Reese still can't sell at a home basketball game. The numbers are there, and they're only there for one person and one person alone. The one, the only, Caitlin Clark. If that's not enough to make someone the MVP, shouldn't her play do it as well? I'm not saying she's going to win the MVP. I know she, I, I believe she's in the conversation. I think if the voting ended was today, she'd be finished second behind Asia Wilson because I think she's been that much of an impact on her on her franchise. They're 13 and 15 now. Last year they won. 13 games. They're 13 and 15 with 12 games to go. They won 13 games last season. And this all-star break has been huge for them. And I know I bitched and moaned about her not being in the Olympics. I still feel that way. But her not being in the Olympics might have been the best thing that could ever happen to her and that team. Because they look fucking good. Today against Seattle, they looked incredible defensively. Defensively, they were really good. And that's rare because they've been awful defensively. They won a game by 17 points, their largest margin of victory against, team, against a team that beat them three times, a team they struggled with. You're seeing a major difference in this team. I don't know what their record's going to be. I said they're going to finish probably 21 and 19, which I stick. That's my number. I'm going to stick on that number. They're going to go 11 and, let's say, 11 and four, but they, 10 and four. And it's 14 years. I said they were going to go 10 and 4. So I said they'll go 21 and 19. Who knows, man? The way they're playing, if they play the second half, the way they played in the second half against, if they can play the first half against Phoenix and the second half against Seattle and play like that every game, there's no one that beats that team. However, if they can play just the way they played defensively in the second half, Against Seattle, especially in that fourth quarter, it looked hella good, bro. They, they, this, this is a team that I don't think people really want to see in the playoffs. Sounds silly, but 
the way they look, they're, they're a team to, to, to worry about. They're, they're becoming a team to worry about. Because the one thing that if you haven't noticed by now, which you should have, Kaylin Clark is not afraid to shoot now. She looked like she was afraid to shoot towards the end of the break, to, just before the break. She didn't feel comfortable. She is letting it fly. Today she was short-arming a bunch of shots. I don't really know why. But she wasn't afraid to keep shooting. She took 10 threes. She went 3 of 10. She still finished 9 of 19, which means she was 6 of 9 from 2. She hit a floater. She, you know, she's got she hit a couple mid-range shots. Went to the basket. She took she took uh who the hell was guarding her? Jewel Lloyd. She freaking mudded Jewel Lloyd to the rim. I'm telling you right now, that, that that break has been a godsend for her and that team. And it's gonna be something to see in the, over this last this last month or so of the season before the playoffs, because they are dangerous. They're they're looking dangerous. We'll see. But, yeah, that's the Caitlin Clark effect. Look at those numbers. Numbers, data, tell you the story of what people care about. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow and ring that bell to get all the up-to-minute updates on our content. Come on now.